So we can see that this normal curve is going to work a little bit differently than the discrete probability distributions from chapter six. But we want to look more in depth at the properties of the normal curve. If you're ever interested, that is actually the algebraic equation for a normal curve, if you'd like to know the probability normal density function. All right, so the graph is symmetric. So that means that it's mirror shaped around the center. And the center, of course, happens at mu. Mu is in the center. So it would be symmetric about the mean mu. Technically, you can also do it around x bar, but we're not particularly interested in that at this point. All right, so that means the center depends entirely on the mean, right? So that mean will be where the graph has its highest peak. Now, the curve has inflection points, and we've seen these before. We talked about these back in the empirical rule days. Those inflection points happen at the mean minus a sigma and the mean plus sigma. All right, so if you add on, subtract away a standard deviation, you get one inflection point. That's one standard deviation away. Now, where are they? Well, let me grab a ruler. This is drawn by computer, so you can actually see exactly where it is right on this computer drawing. Well, not exactly, but it's pretty close. The computer is good, but you know we're eyeballing it. Those two points right there, those are the inflection points. They should be symmetric, so they should be the same height and the same distance. See, the distance down here should be exactly the same. So that's inflection point number one, and the other one is inflection point number two. Now, if you're ever interested, you've actually felt inflection points in your life. If you've ever been on a roller coaster or somebody who's driving a car too fast over a hill, the inflection point is where you can feel your posterior coming up off the seat, right? You feel your butt lifting off the seat. That is an inflection point. It's actually where you're going your fastest on a roller coaster. So if you're going up, up, up on the roller coaster and you go down right there, that's where you start lifting off the seat right there. That's the inflection point. It has a definition in math beyond this that's actually quite important. But for our purposes, that's all we need to know. Now, how are you going to eyeball that? That's important to us. So if you look at the bottom of the curve and the top of the curve, halfway is just a little bit below there. About halfway is about there. And so it's just a touch above halfway between the bottom and top of the curve. And so we'll write that. So a little above halfway between the bottom and top of curve. And notice it has to be at the same spot on both sides because the graph is symmetric. Right? Same spot on both sides. By that I mean same distance over here as it is over here. Got to be the same distance. All right, now to talk about this next piece, I'd actually like us to look at um, a Desmos graph, graph that I have built for us. So Desmos is an online graphing calculator and you can see it has the normal distribution in it. And let me turn off the grid one second. There we have it. Um, the particular graph I'm drawing right now has the mean set at zero, that's mu. I, I can't put mu into this program, so it, it, I used m. And the standard deviation s set at one. So if you look at the second uh, number point on our page, it said the mean or the center of the curve depends entirely on mu. Let me show you what that means. If I push this mean left right to a lower value, then the center becomes negative 2.1 because that's what I made this, the mean. If I make the mean 0 0.4, that's where that center line is. So that's why number two says the center of the curve depends entirely on mu. Whatever mu is, that will be the center of your curve. Now, what I really am interested in, because the center of the curve part's pretty easy to see, but that shape of the curve depends entirely on sigma. Let's show what that means. All right, so let me go back and make this zero. There it is. All right, so I made the mean zero, so that center line is right at zero, lovely. 
And now I want to show what happens if I make standard deviation get larger. So currently the standard deviation is one. If I slide it over here and increase it to say two, look at what happened to the curve. It was more spread out, right? It's flatter, and wider, right? Shorter. And then if I make the mean, or it's mean the standard deviation shrink, let me make it 0.75. Look at what happens to that graph. It's taller and narrower, right? So, and less spread out. It's more compact. So if we have a smaller standard deviation, that means we have a taller, narrower curve. And the narrow part is, is important because if it's narrower, that means it has less spread. Because remember, that's what standard deviation is a measurement of. Standard deviation is a measurement of spread. So if you have a smaller standard deviation, it's more packed in, it's less spread out. If you have a larger standard deviation, then that meant that the graph was shorter and wider. And that wider piece is important because that means it has more spread. So the shape of the curve, right, how tall and skinny it is, how short and wide it is, depends entirely on mu. The, the mu, or excuse me, depends entirely on sigma, the mu has nothing to do with it, right? The mu just tells you where the center is, but it doesn't change how, what the curve looks like. So if I move this curve over, it still has the same shape, right? What changes the shape of it is the standard deviation, right? Standard deviation changes the shape. The mean changes where the middle is. All right. Now, what's the next part? Oh, the total area under the curve, well, it's a probability curve, so it had better be one, <laughs> otherwise we're in big trouble, right? It better be one because it's probability. And that means, well, let's think about this. If the whole curve, the area under the entire curve is one or 100%, we use both of them. So if it's one or 100%, then what's the area to the left of the mean? Well, the mean is the center, so the area to the left of that mean or the area to the right of that mean, either one, should both be 0.5 or 50%. Half the curve, right? If you want, you could say half. You got a half the curve over here, half the curve over here. The area of each part is a half in order to make the whole thing one. And the last piece is um, not, well, it's not a trivial piece, but it's not a big deal for us because um, well, we would never not to do this. The x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. What that means is, look, if I let my curve, if I let my value get farther and farther away from the mean, do you see what's happening to the y value? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So currently it's at 0 0.0009. It's not zero, but it's getting close, right? And the farther I go away, the closer it gets. That's what a horizontal asymptote means. It means that the curve is basically skimming along the x-axis. It never crosses the x-axis. And that's the only thing that matters to us. When you're drawing these by hand, which you will eventually have to draw them by hand, you never want to cross the x-axis over here. You want to make it have a nice little tail and kind of skim along that x-axis right there. So the curve... I sometimes say it surfs along it, right? Like a surfboard. The curve skims or surfs along the x-axis, but it never crosses. And it doesn't in both directions. It actually goes forever. There's little arrows here without you seeing it. So the x-axis forever. To infinity and beyond. To quote Buzz Lightyear. Right? And that's a symbol for infinity, by the way. It's like a sideways eight. But if you want to write the word infinity, that's fine too.